If you think the gaffes from the likes of Sarah Palin and Donald Trump are an embarrassment, wait until you get a load of the former Prime Minister of Australia. The captain of the Costa Concordia wants to know if you need any help with your boat policy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was one boat that did get stopped, wasn't it? Welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 cringeworthy Tony Abbott moments. Um, Canada, Canada. For this list, we're sending off the former Australian Prime Minister in style, with a look back at, well, why he lost his job in less than two years. <laughs> Number 10, baddies versus baddies. In the midst of the Syrian civil war, Tony Abbott was on the campaign trail in his bid to become Prime Minister of Australia when he was asked the question of how he thought Australia should handle the conflict. We've got a civil war going on in that benighted country uh, between uh, two pretty unsavoury sides. It's not goodies versus baddies, it's baddies versus baddies. Taking a war that has resulted in hundreds of thousands of lost lives and reducing it to a case of baddies versus baddies, Abbott's words would have made far more sense coming out of the mouth of a child. That's to say nothing of how insensitive some thought his choice of words were to the many lives impacted by the ongoing battle. Number 9. Phony Tony What you haven't explained is how you can make one promise in one month mm -hmm. and then completely change it well, the next. Well, I, what, I, what happened I, in I, that I, month I, where I, you had I, this I, sudden again. explosion of vision? Fair or not, many people believe that most politicians are talking out of their asses and that you cannot take anything they say at face value. Sometimes. Uh, in the heat of discussion, you go a little bit further uh, than you would uh, if it was an absolutely uh, calm, considered, prepared, scripted remark. Yet it is still amazing to hear a politician just come out and say exactly that. While striving to get six months of paid parental leave for Australia's parents, Abbott explicitly promised no new taxes, but then a month later introduced just that. After being called out on the action by journalist Kerry O'Brien, Abbott stated, The statements that need to be taken absolutely um, as, as gospel truth is those carefully prepared scripted remarks. Thus confirming what many already suspected. So every time you make a statement, we have to ask you whether it's carefully no. prepared and scripted or yeah. whether it's just something yeah. on the fly. Look, look we, we no, can... No, seriously, this is a very no, serious but, question. But, but, but... Number eight lifestyle choice. The Prime Minister Tony Abbott is under fire over comments he made that it's a lifestyle choice for Indigenous people to live in remote communities. In 2014, Abbott made a very disrespectful comment to Australia's Indigenous people while speaking to business leaders. He referred to the land prior to the forming of Britain's colonies in 1788 as, quote, it's nothing but bush. Therefore, many observers were not surprised when his government decided to cut funding to remote Indigenous communities. However, his words justifying the lapse in federal funding for Indigenous Western Australian communities astonished many. What we can't do uh, is endlessly subsidise lifestyle choices if those lifestyle choices are not conducive to the kind of full participation in Australian society. Defending the cuts by saying that it's not a taxpayer's responsibility to fund people's lifestyle choices, he belittled the culture of a proud people and had critics calling him racist. And now uh, a city which is one of the most spectacular cities in our, on our globe and uh, uh, in a country which is as free, as fair and as prosperous uh, as any. Number seven, the wink. When you winked yesterday, um, I reckon the whole of Australia could have almost um, seen and realised the moment that you realised there was a camera on you. We should all strive to show respect for our elders. But when you're the Prime Minister of Australia and you're listening to a 67-year-old woman's tale of woe, that should be an absolute no-brainer. People are really divided over this. Some think Tony is a horrible sexist, while others think he's a sleazy asshole. If you're Tony Abbott, and that woman is telling you that to make ends meet in light of recent cuts to healthcare coverage, she has had to work as a sex phone operator, though, then that is apparently not cut and dry. And I work on an adult sex line to make ends meet. While chatting on a radio show and listening to the caller's story, Abbott is seen winking right after the woman mentions her profession. I, I was looking at John Fain. Uh, he was smiling at me and I winked back at him. Uh, 
I, I shouldn't have done it, Cal. The PM's subsequent claim that the timing was just a coincidence hasn't held much water. And considering we were able to make a whole top 10 of his embarrassing gaffes, we don't blame people for not buying it. Thank you, Andrew. And I'll always vote Liberal, but I've got to be honest. Number six, Bernie Banton. What possessed you to launch a personal attack on Bernie Banton? That was bonkers, wasn't it? It was a mistake. Was uh, it bonkers? It was an error of judgment on my part. Uh, I shouldn't have done it. When workers for the Australian company James Hardy were suffering and dying due to the results of asbestos exposure, Bernie Banton served as the loudest voice in the fight to get compensation. When Abbott was health minister, victims petitioned the government to subsidize their medication. Banton attempted to deliver the signatures to Abbott, but he refused to meet him. Look, it was a stunt. Let's be upfront about this. He then further added fuel to the fire by stating Banton didn't have pure intentions. I know Bernie is very sick, uh, but just because a person is sick uh, doesn't mean that he is necessarily pure of heart in all things. The result was Banton labelling Abbott a gutless creep, a label with which many agreed. What a gutless effort. I'm absolutely infuriated that this man has so consistently denied to meeting me Number five, the suppository of all wisdom. There was an audible gasp in the room, a few people snickering. Uh, I saw an MP, a Liberal MP, mouth suppository. In a list populated by many tone-deaf and downright disrespectful moments, this entry is actually quite hilarious and absolutely cringe-inducing. Can I please ask you to give him a rousing deacon applause? The next one is while speaking in front of a party of his supporters, Abbott gave a brief and relaxed speech that unintentionally left them laughing. No one, however smart, uh, however well educated, however experienced, is the suppository of all wisdom. The idea holds true that nobody is the repository of all wisdom. However, the politician instead said suppository, and the term quickly became a trending topic on Twitter and had the world laughing at him not with him. He went on to win the election easily, so <laughs> no damage done there at all. Number four, repealing the carbon tax. Every time a housewife switches on the iron, or the that's what she needs to understand, or the house husband. Unfortunately for Australia's women, Prime Minister Tony Abbott appointed himself Minister for Women. But more needs to be done. And this, despite many prominent and average women labelling him a misogynist with one of the most notable people being former PM Julia Gillard. Because if he wants to know what misogyny looks like in modern Australia, he doesn't need a motion in the House of Representatives, he needs a mirror. In 2014, he was asked what his biggest achievement in that role was. Those unfamiliar with him may have expected him to discuss fighting the wage gap, violence against women, or other serious issues women face today. As many of us know, um, women are particularly focused uh, on the household budget and the repeal of the carbon tax uh, means a $550 a year benefit for the average family. Instead, he said women are particularly focused on budgets for the home. So repealing the carbon tax was his top move. And though this is silly, he couldn't have just said nothing, could he? He might as well have said that by abolishing the carbon price, he'd been able to give women more money to buy a better iron so they could stay home and iron more often. Number three, shit happens. This was Tony Abbott's response. In 2011, Abbott was met with the news of Australian soldier Lance Corporal Jared McKinney's death in Afghanistan. While his response was one that was picked up by a camera during a private conversation, the fact that he nonetheless alluded to the death of a soldier as, quote, sometimes shit happens, left many incredulous. But he was right when he said, sometimes shit happens. It's just when shit happens to Abbott, it's usually because it came out of his mouth. As human beings, we understand that in a moment of such gravity, it's human nature to be at a loss for words. So if he'd realized his gaffe and apologized, the controversy could have easily subsided. The bigger problem for Mr. Abbott is the way he handled the matter when the journalists questioned him. Abbott went a different way, though. And when questioned by a reporter about the remark, he stared in silent anger for 28 seconds before saying that such a question deserved no better response than silence. Um, I've given you the response you deserve. 
for a response like this. We too have no words. See that fuming silence? That's Tony desperately trying to stop any more shit happening. Number two, Sir Prince Philip. There aren't there any Australians more appropriate to receive Australia's top honour on Australia Day than Prince Philip? With all of the many mistakes Abbott has seemed to make during his years as Prime Minister, the idea that he was nearly ousted from the role because of this action doesn't seem so far-fetched. But apparently, he did it to suck up to the Queen, which makes it all the more awe-inspiring. Well, I think it's a bit ridiculous that the Prime Minister of Australia is giving knighthood to royalty. In a move that even disgusted some of his staunchest supporters, like billionaire Rupert Murdoch, Abbott went behind nearly everyone's back to make Prince Philip a knight, Australia's most prestigious honour. <laughs> Considering Australia's contentious relationship with the monarchy, the choice to give this title to the Queen's husband, a man who asked if Australians, quote, still throw spears at each other, was called into question. If we're going to have the system, let's give it to Australians. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are a few honourable, or in this case, dishonourable mentions. And Jesus knew uh, that there was a, a place for everything, and, and it is not necessarily everyone's place to come to Australia. And he yeah. said that women's virginity was a precious gift and they shouldn't just go throwing it about willy-nilly. Homosexuality, mm -hmm. how do you feel about that? Oh, I probably feel a bit threatened. <laughs> and I quote, I guess our country owes its existence to a form of foreign investment by the British government in the then unsettled or scarcely settled Great South Land, unquote. They're um, feisty. Uh, I think I can probably say I have a bit of sex appeal. <laughs> Number one, Housewives of Australia. You know, uh, when I was under attack uh, for uh, alleged old-fashioned attitudes uh, uh, towards... Uh, um, um, uh, <laughs> ..towards the female section of society... As we've previously mentioned, Abbott's views on women are seen as far from progressive. The housewives of Australia need to understand as they do the ironing. But in one moment while at a dry cleaners, he inspired many people's jaws to drop with a quote that revealed his view on a woman's role in the household. The last election was two years ago. That means that the next election is one year away at most. That means that within a year, the Australian people will have the chance to vote. We actually think that Abbott's intention was to speak on a level that women understand, which is condescending enough, but what he doesn't realise is that no intelligent person could relate to his old-fashioned ideas. Do you still believe that the women do the ironing in the house? Uh, in the Abbott household, uh, the dry cleaner does that work. Worst of all, judging from the rest of his career and his comments to and about women, Abbott clearly learned nothing from the furor his comment induced, since this was made three years before he assumed office as Prime Minister. Where are the ladies, by the way? <laughs> yeah. There are some ladies there in this are. delegation. There are. there are, yes. Where are they? Um, I don't know which camera to look at. Where, what's happened to the ladies? Do you agree with our list? Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. Oh, really? <laughs> Are you surprised his party's reaction to all of this was getting rid of an elected prime minister in record time? For more amazing top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You're not saying anything, Tony.